Yes. So what are we looking at? We are looking at weighted average number of equity shares. And I told you that basically your time waiting factor is something which should be calculated in number of days. Therefore, number of days outstanding a number of days for which specific number of shares are outstanding during the period divided by total number of days during the period is the most important thing to be looked at. So if I look at what the calculations I have done out here. Yes, guys. So look at the calculations that I've done out here. So if you look at the calculations, I've missed out the calculation of time waiting factor. Had I considered time waiting factor in number of days, then this should not be 5 by 12 or 5 by 12 and 2 by 12, but it should have been calculated in number of days. So divided by 365 or divided by 366. Now someone will come up to me and say, sir, what is there? It more or less will be the same because the question which you showed us is almost coming up to the same logic. Because the issue of shares has been either taken at the beginning of the month or at the end of the month. Therefore, it shouldn't have ma mattered much. That is exactly my point. Where he says that though he is discussing about veins and gives a very specific definition. He also says that a reasonable approximation of veins can be considered as sufficient in most cases. So a reasonable approximation of veins can be considered sufficient. Since it can be considered sufficient, even a reasonable approximation. Therefore, in such kind of situations, you don't have to be bothered of how exact your calculation are. Because if it is a leap year, then my denominator should be 366. Non-leap year, the denominator should be 365. So all these logics you can forget. So therefore, he's saying reasonable approximation of veins is sufficient. Exact figure is not necessary in determination of weighted average number of equity shares. That will bring us to the end of discussion on veins, but there are multiple adjustment to veins. What are adjustment to veins? Partly paid shares, shares with different nominal value, right? Number two, there can also be a situation where I have a uh, bonus shares, where I can have right shares. So the, these are the three fundamental adjustments that we'll be looking into veins, but any doubts, please let me know until here. Look at the adjustments of veins here. Now when I look at the adjustment of veins, I have to be very careful because look at the adjustments which are coming up with you. The first adjustment, partly paid shares or shares with different nominal value. What happens when I have different nominal value shares? When I say different nominal value, that means basically I have 110 rupee shares. I have 105 rupee shares. Different paid up value, 110 rupee shares fully paid up, 40 10 rupee share 8 paid up, 60 100, 10 rupee share 4 paid up. So this way I can have multiple paid up values also. Whenever I have multiple paid up values or multiple nominal values, then the right way of calculating veins is by considering an equivalent number of shares. How do I calculate this equivalent number of shares? Very simple guys, when I tell you equal and number of shares, then the easiest way of calculating equal and number of shares is by using that simple formula. Equivalent number of shares is equal to. Equivalent number of shares. Of rupee X each. I can find equivalent number of 10 rupee share. I can find out equivalent number of 5 rupee share. 
whatever you want you can calculate by using this formula total paid up value on shares divided by x so if i want equivalent number of 10 rupee share i'll divide it by 10 if i want equivalent number of 5 rupee share i'll divide it by 5 if i want equivalent 100 rupee share i'll divide it by 100 this is the formula which i will use to calculate equivalent number of equity shares now even on this i have a particular topic or i have a particular discussion on this let's see what is the discussion on there partly paid up shares this is exactly what i'm talking about look at that particular example or illustration given during accounting year starting from 1st jan to 31st december the balance the number of shares outstanding at the beginning of the year is 1800 the number of shares issued during the period are 600 and of 10 rupee nominal value share only 5 rupees was paid up the remaining shares at the beginning were complete 10 rupees paid up therefore there is no multiple nominal uh, not multiple paid up value shares which is arising out here let's look at how do i calculate veins in this situation now look at it when did the issue happen 31st october how many shares 600 shares of 5 rupees each paid up so let's come back to it If I want equivalent number of shares and here in this case, I want equivalent number of rupee 10 share because all other shares are 10 rupees each. Equivalent number of rupee 10 shares is equal to 600 shares of 5 rupees each divided by 10, which is nothing but 300. So 300 equivalent number of shares were issued by the enterprise. Now, when did the issue happen? The issue happened exactly on 31st October. So on 1st January to 31st October, that is for a period of 10 months, sorry, for a period of 11 months, because November and December are the only two months which are not considered. So for a period of 11, uh, 10 months, I'm sorry, 10 months, 1800 shares were outside. After that, for the last two months, that is November and December, the actual number of shares outstanding was 2,400. But since I'm considering equivalent number of shares, I cannot consider 2,400, but I'll have to consider equivalent number of shares. What is your equivalent number of shares? 1,800 plus 300. Look at the computation, how it goes. Eighteen hundred shares outstanding for the first ten months. Eighteen hundred shares added not by six hundred but should be added by equivalent number of shares that is three hundred outstanding for two months. Calculate this part. This is fifteen hundred, and how much is this? This is two thousand one hundred divided by six is nothing but three fifty. So 1850 is my WNES weighted average number of equity shares in the illustration given to me. So in the illustration given, I'll say that the weighted average number of equity shares is 1850. Clear? That is my first adjustment. Look at my next adjustment to weights. My next adjustment to weights is regarding change in number of shares without corresponding change in enterprise resources. Why does this occur? Why does this happen that there is a change in number of shares without corresponding change in enterprise resources? Is it necessary always that there is a change in number of shares and there is a change in enterprise resources? I will elaborate. Let me elaborate this part. Let us consider this part. If I have number of shares,
and I have enterprise resources. What do you mean by enterprise resources? Enterprise resources is nothing but net assets of the company. It is nothing but net assets, that is assets minus outside liabilities. Look at it. Let's say I have shares issued for cash. What happens? My net assets increases with the cash amount. Correct? Or let's say I have issued it for exchange of asset. Exchange for exchange of asset. Again, your net assets will increase. But let's say, for example, I've issued for conversion of a debenture. Issued for conversion of debenture. What will happen when a debenture is converted into equity share? Ultimately, your debenture reduces. There is a reduction in the value of debenture. And when there is a reduction in the value of debenture, which is an outside liability, what happens to your net asset? Net asset increases. When I repay or when I buy back shares, what will happen? When I buy back shares, again my cash will reduce, number of equity shares will reduce. So therefore, you will observe that they are both moving in the same direction. Number of shares increase, net asset also increases. Number of shares increase, net asset increase. Number of shares increase, net asset increase. Therefore, there is always a change in net assets for a change in number of shares. But this peculiar part which I am talking about here, in this given adjustment, I am talking about a change in number of shares without corresponding change in enterprise resources. Why does this occur and where does this come up? I have given you examples. For example, where I have issued fully paid bonus shares. I have issued fully paid bonus shares. So that means free shares have been issued. So what happens? Your net asset did not change, but your number of shares has increased. Share split. For one 10 rupee share, I am giving five 2 rupee shares. What will happen? Number of shares increased. Net asset increased? Absolutely no. So this way, I can have situations where there is a change in number of shares without corresponding change in enterprise resources. In such cases, in such cases, I will assume that such a change has occurred at the beginning of earliest period reported. I will assume that such a change has occurred at the beginning of earliest period reported. I'll tell you what this means. Look at the example given down below. Let's say in the current year, that is in the year 1890, bonus issue came up on 15th of August, Independence Day. A company has declared bonus shares. Now, when the bonus shares have been issued on 15th of August, I will assume that these bonus shares have not been issued starting from 1st April 2018, but I will assume that these shares have been issued at the beginning of 1st April 2017. Why is that so? Because I said such a change is assumed to have occurred at the beginning of earliest period reported. What is earliest period? Then you need to understand that always financials are prepared on a comparative basis. If my current year being reported is 1819, then my previous year reported is 1718, which is the earliest year. year earliest year is 1718. Beginning of earliest year reported is nothing but 1st April 2017. First question, one thing that should pop up is why? First question anyone will ask is why? Why should I do it? I'll tell, you. I'll tell you why you should do it. Take a particular example, okay? My current year is 2020-21.
my comparative previous year was 1920. Okay, just for the purpose of example, I'm taking. Let's say my PAS profits available to equity shareholders last year was 40 lakhs, current year is 60 lakhs. That means the PAS has actually increased by 50%. Let's say in computation of WNES, I earlier had 20 lakh equity shares. However, during the year, there was a bonus issue. Bonus of 1 is to 2 shares. Therefore, I have issued how many shares? 10 lakh shares. Correct? What is the closing number of equity shares out here? In the current year, the total number of shares will become 30 lakhs. Calculate EPS from this formula. My EPS of previous year is 2, even current year is also 2. If I give you a blind figure that last year EPS 2, current year EPS 2, can you tell me what do you understand from that? I will tell you. What I understand is the company has no increase in earnings. Correct or wrong? Wrong. Because there was a 50% increase in earnings. Then why is it not being represented in your EPS? It is not being represented in my EPS because of this part of bonus shares. So I am saying that these two here are not comparable. Since they are not comparable, to make it comparable, what I will start doing now is, I will assume that these bonus shares were issued at the beginning of earliest period reported. What is the beginning of earliest period reported? Earliest period reported is 1920. Beginning is 1st April 2019. These bonus shares were existing right from then. Then what will happen? Restated 1920. How I will get restated 1920? So I will get a restated 1920 as 40 lakhs divided by not 20, but I will consider it as 30 lakhs. Therefore, the EPS here will be 1.33. This 1.33 and this 2 are very much comparable. Now if I tell you, the EPS last year was 1.33 and in the current year has become 2. Therefore, yes, it is an increase of 50% in the EPS figure. There is an increase of 50% in the EPS figure. That is exactly the change as per as your profitability is concerned. Clear? So this is particularly the aspect why I said whenever they have, there is an issue of bonus shares, I will assume that these bonus shares have been issued at the beginning of earliest period reported. Why did you consider that? If I don't consider it, then my last year EPS and current year EPS are not comparable. Therefore, to make them comparable, Last year EPS will be restated, recalculated as, as if the bonus shares were issued at the beginning of last year itself. Therefore, instead of considering 20 lakh shares in the last year, I have considered the number of shares as 30 lakhs, derived at a comparable EPS of last year as 1.33, which is perfectly comparable to the current EPS of 2. Clear? If any doubts, let me know.
The last topic is bonus elements in rights issue. What is the bonus element in rights issue? I'll tell you. It is the same logic. The adjustment is absolutely the same. That the bonus shares, whenever they are issued, I'll assume that these shares have been issued at the beginning of earliest period report. There's no change in that logic at all. But what we are trying to say right now is that even in rights issue, there is a bonus element. So I'm not talking about a new adjustment. I'm talking about the same adjustment of bonus shares where shares, there is an increase in number of shares without corresponding increase in enterprise resources. But someone will say, sir, rights has an exercise price. When there is an exercise price, there is an increase in cash. So enterprise resource has changed. Yes. But I'm not talking about the entire right shares. I'm not saying all the right shares are bonus. I'm saying out of the right share, there is a bonus element, a small element of bonus, which is hidden into the right share. Why is that so? Because if the market price per share on today's date is 100, right shares are offered to the existing shareholders. To the existing shareholders, I cannot ask them to subscribe the share at 100 rupees only. I will have to tell them, I will give you an offer to subscribe the shares, not at 100, at 80 itself. Then only they will accept it. Let's say, for example, I go like this, okay? I'm just giving you an example, guys. Don't consider that this is the entire thing. Let's say, market price per share is 100. My exercise price of rights is 80. Number of right shares are let's say about 500. Okay. Now you tell me how much proceeds did I get from rights issue? My proceeds from rights is equal to 500 right shares, each share issued at 80 rupees. Therefore, my proceeds from rights issue are 40,000. To arrive at the same 40,000 rupees of cash, if the share was issued at a market price, number of shares to be issued at market price is how much? If I would have issued each share at market price of 100 rupees, then in such cases, to arrive at that same 40,000, I would have only issued 400 right, sorry, I would have only issued 400 right shares. Correct? But actually, how many right shares did you issue? Actual rights are 500. Therefore, instead of issuing 400 shares at 100 rupees, I should 500 shares at 80 rupees. Therefore, this 100 excess shares, excess issue of shares will be considered as bonus element. This is called as bonus element. However, my computation methodology is wrong, but my logic is right. The logic says that to arrive at the same proceeds, to arrive at the same cash, if the share was issued at market price, how many shares would I issue? If I compare it with the actual number of right shares, the actual number of rights are in excess. Such excess will be considered as bonus element. Or I'll put it like this. I'll say that out of 500 right shares, 400 are issued at full consideration, 100 are issued at nil consideration. 100 shares are issued at zero consideration. 400 shares are issued at full consideration. Now, this is exactly what I'm talking about. So this 100 shares, which are issued as bonus element, are considered to be issued at the beginning of earliest period reported. They're assumed to have been issued at the beginning of earliest period reported, the same way like we have seen as far as your, uh, you know, uh, the second adjustment is concerned. However, computation of bonus element is significantly different. Look at how they calculate. The number of bo the bonus element in rights issue is equal to number of shares at the beginning of the period 
multiplied by RAF minus 1. What is RAF? Rights adjusting factor. How do I calculate this RAF? Fair value per share before rights issue divided by theoretical X rights price per share. How do I calculate this theoretical X rights price? Number of shares before rights multiplied by fair value of share before rights plus the amount which I collected from rights issue divided by total number of shares after rights is called as theoretical X rights price. I'll give you an example to help you understand this logic even better. Look at this logic. The rights issue, let's say the net profit was 11 lakhs earlier and 15 lakhs in the current year. Number of shares outstanding before rights issue was 5 lakhs. Number of right shares were 1 lakh shares. One share for every 5 shares outstanding. Each right share in the rights was issued at 15 rupees and the last day for exercise of right is on 1st March. That is 2 months in the current year. Right after two months in the current year, there's the rights issue. And what is he saying? He's saying that the fair value of each share immediately prior rights issue was 21. So that is the fair value before rights. So let's try to calculate this. What is the number of shares prior rights before my rights issue? The number of shares were 5 lakhs. What is their fair value at that point of time? Fair value prior rights issue. was 21 correct so i am saying i'll calculate bonus element like this bonus element in rights is equal to how do i calculate number of share before rights issue or at the beginning of the year that is 5 lakhs multiplied by RAF minus 1. Do you know what is RAF? I don't know yet. What is the formula of RAF then? Come to the formula of RAF. RAF is equal to fair value prior rights issue divided by Theoretical X rights price. Theoretical X rights price per share. Calculate. Do you know what is the fair value before rights? Yes. Already given in the question. 21. Do you know what is theoretical X rights price? I don't know. So let me calculate theoretical X rights price first. Theoretical X rights price. Theoretical X rights price per share is equal to calculate number of shares before rights 5 lakhs into fair value per share 21 plus. Proceeds from rights. How many right, share, right shares did I issue? 1 lakh. What is the price per each right? 15. Divided by total number of shares post rights is 6 lakhs. Solve this. 5 lakhs into 21 is 1 crore 5 lakhs. Plus 15 lakhs proceeds from rights issue. Divided by 6 lakhs. 
there is nothing but 1 crore 20 lakhs divided by 6 lakhs. Therefore, theoretical X rights price is 20. Go to the above formula and submit it. RAF is equal to 21 divided by 20, 1.05. If I substitute RAF as 1.05 minus 1, therefore 0 0.05 is what is left multiplied by 5 lakhs is 25. How many right shares were issued? 1 lakh. Out of 1 lakh, what is the bonus element? 25,000. So I put it like this. Out of 1 lakh right shares, I'll say that 25,000 are 25,000 are issued at nil consideration that is bonus and the balance 75,000 will be considered as Full consideration shares issued at full consideration. Now, what is the adjustment on veins regarding? Adjustment of veins is regarding this bonus element. What is the adjustment? Such bonus shares are assumed to have been issued at the beginning of earliest period reported. I will assume that these bonus shares are issued at the beginning of earliest period reported. Let's start looking at it. Computation of EPS. Two years. What are the two years given to us? Year 2010 and two, sorry, 2020 and 2021. Two thousand twenty and two thousand twenty one. Calculate what is PAS. Calculate WNAS, and you should be arriving at the figure of. Let's look back at the question and place the figures there. What are the figures? Eleven lakhs of. PAS and 15 lakhs of PAS, WNES we'll have to calculate because we, we know only that the number of shares outstanding at the beginning are 5 lakhs and there were 1 lakh rights issue on 1st March. So let's consider this 11 lakhs and 15 lakhs. Eleven lakhs. 15 lakhs. WNES last year was 5 lakhs. Therefore, actually last year EPS was 2.2. Without considering bonus element, I'll bring in the bonus element. Look at it now. Current year, when I want to calculate WNES, I'll calculate like this. Veins of 2021. Now, instead of taking the number of shares outstanding at the beginning of the year as 5 lakhs, since there is a bonus element, I will consider it as 5 lakh 25,000 bonus shares until when? 1st March for 2 months. Subsequent to the bonus shares, the number of shares has now become 6 lakhs. For how many months? 10 months. 10 months is nothing but 5 lakhs. This one I'll have to calculate. 525 into 2 by 12. This is 87,500. Therefore, the total number of shares to be considered as veins in 2021 is 5,87,500.
So what is the EPS? 15 lakhs divided by 5 lakh 87,500 is 2.553. But one thing you need to remember that these two are not comparable. Why are they not comparable? I'll have to restate the EPS of current year. How do I restate the EPS of current year uh, of the previous year? Calculate. Restated 2020. 11 lakhs PAS no change, but your WNES will be considered as 5 lakh 25,000. So 11 lakh divided by 5 lakh 25,000 going to give me an answer of 2.095. So these two are absolutely comparable. 2.095 will be compared with 2.553 in the current year and 2.2 is not supposed to be considered for comparative purposes because the bonus element in the rights issue that is to the extent of 25,000 shares which we have ascertained here should be considered as a bonus share which is assumed to be issued at the beginning of earliest period reported. That will bring us to the end of the concept on adjustment to weights.